What did you think about my answer to AJ? You are, you are, you know, you're closer to my age. I don't remember your age, but we've hung out a couple of times. Um, so what did you think about my advice to him as someone who is a, you do multiple things, right? Uh, but you also outsource a lot, which is, this is actually why it's good to get your perspective. Cause me and you talked earlier and you talked about outsourcing certain things so that you aren't as, uh, you know, you don't have to be in the weeds and in the details of stuff and you find value outsourcing things while some people are better maybe at doing multiple things. So I kind of wanted to, to bring you in and get your perspective on that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I love the way that you position it, right? And especially the example that you use, right? Because a lot of times we, we talk about how, right, like how our gifts are supposed to make a way for our calling, right? But I think people try to like people want every gift to be something that's going to generate like the the monetary benefit from them to live off of. You mm. know what I mean? So like some of some of your gifts, <laughs> right, will be your calling, but that doesn't mean that all of your gifts are, right? You know what I mean? Like some of them create the opportunity. So the example you use with Nick where, you know, he had a gift to, to do photography, but he used photography to build income and then to stabilize his financial foundation. Yes. And then he go out and do things with the money and be able to invest. And I think that's good advice because I see too many people give artists advice, right? I, I, you know, just from, you know, I had a label at one point, I've done this for like 18 years now. So, but I always have people that ask for, for advice and they're, you know, everybody want to quit their job. You know what I'm saying? And, and, <laughs> like people, like people paying, you know what I mean? Like everybody paying for merch, like everybody kicking out money for shows. And then, I mean, especially the coronavirus is going to challenge a lot of people. I did a podcast episode with Kelly Cole, Aaron Cole's father, right? Mm-hmm. Just talking about how, what's the difference and how people are going to continue to generate revenue, which is why I respect the way that you focus on licensing and music mm-hmm. placement and stuff other than performing. Because the mm-hmm. advice that most people give you is make as much music as possible try to do as many shows as possible and get some merch so you can sell some merch so you can make some money. Cause nobody's, you know, people not going to pay you to perform when you first get on. And right. like the amount of time that we spend trying to build up our own merch line, the amount of time that we spend, you know, just like kicking out music because we're trying to generate content, we could be developing one of our other gifts and in earning income, mm. right? Whether pictures or making videos or you know what I mean like K drama done, done made them bangers but he also been slanging them beats right so mm-hmm. it's like it's not just one and you know and I think we need to we need to be more more open to being dualistic and then if we you know when you create sources of revenue um, mm-hmm. and you have different sources of revenue that you can leverage then it allows you to really focus on the stuff um, that's important and that you add more value to because you can prioritize that from a time perspective. And like you and I were talking about, I'm not, you know, I'm not a social media kind of person. Like I would rather get on a zoom call or have a, or, you know, have a, a, a phone conversation with somebody, mm-hmm. but like I write down quotes constantly all day. Mm. So I have a, I have like a 37 page document for my content manager that are mm. all of my quotes. Right. But she takes mm. my quotes, she turns them into graphics And then she puts them online. So it's my Mm. thoughts, but I don't have to stop when I'm thinking because I prefer to just think and create content. I love writing, whether it's music, blog posts, articles. I'm working on four books right now, but like I can focus on that because I don't have to worry about um, other stuff. And even like my wife and then just like you, you know what I mean? Like my family is my team. So like my best friend is a film producer. So like I give him my music and he figures out the visuals, <laughs> mm. right? Like my wife does, you know, my wife reaches out and books people for my podcast. Yeah. Um, so it's also leveraging the people that are in your circle. But yeah. And yeah, the cool you, thing you, about the cool yeah. thing about you is not only do you have a ministry um, slant, right? But you also have a, a job in the marketplace that yeah. you can leverage to fund a lot of this stuff and then not be a strain on your family and not be a strain or a burden, but it's literally out of an out of abundance. It's out of an overflow because you you have other skills outside of just this. So then you could approach it in a strategical and tactical way that it, it, it doesn't hey, make it a burden. Yeah, bro. And one thing I want to touch on that you spoke about specifically, I didn't do music for five years. 
Mm, okay. So as far as performing, right? Like I, I see, I see a couple of bro- young brothers like Carlton. I see him in the booth. I've had a recording studio in my house since I was 19, mm-hmm. but I recorded music for five years and never released it. Mm. Right. Like it was, it was kind of like my therapy, but what I was doing during that five years was getting two bachelor's degrees and a master's degree and building my career. Mm. You know what I mean? So like, while I was still working like on yeah. a craft, but I wasn't yeah. focusing on putting it out. Got so it. then by the time I went and started making music, right. Mm-hmm. I had a career that allowed me to travel all over the world pretty much for free. Like mm-hmm. when we, when I was kicking it with you in San Diego at yep. your crib yep. with Jamaica, I was out there on a business trip. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I mm-hmm. <laughs> just rolled through in a rental car. Like that didn't cost me anything. Um, Mm -hmm. but that, but I did, I set the, like, I didn't stop working on music kind of like you were giving AJ that advice to like, keep working on your craft, keep building your skill, keep working. So I kept writing music and improving my delivery and my cadence and my originality. When I first started rapping, I sounded just like Tupac because that was my (laughs) favorite rapper. But like, Five five years of recording music without really listening to and trying to mimic somebody, yes. right, or trying to impress an audience, it developed yes. it. But yes. it, g- it gave me a season to where, like you said, I stabilized my family, I built my education, come on, I planted the seeds that led to a very successful career, yep. and now I can actually afford to invest in ministry and invest in music and do shows for free. Like I flew to Wisconsin and did a show in some housing projects. Mm-hmm. Cause somebody asked me to, like, I don't need you to pay me. Yeah. Right. And then they still yeah. paid me when I got there, which I didn't ask for. Right. They, mm-hmm. they gave me some money cause they thought it was a, a long trip, but, um, yeah. but it was in between work trips. So that flight That's didn't good. even cost me, but yeah, you yeah. got to leverage everything. Yeah. And I wanted to bring in, um, I wanted to bring in pastor Roy cause I wanted you guys to know that there's multiple ways, right? There's multiple ways. There's no one linear thing. And again, a lot of us think that, uh, quitting your job is sexy and being a full-time artist is sexy. Yeah, and it could also be absolutely catastrophic and family-ending, like horrible decision if you do it prematurely. And we've been around, okay, dramas in here. We've been around long enough to see marriages end and relationships crumble and lives get ruined because somebody was pursuing rap ministry, but they weren't actually pursuing their life ministry in a proper way and it costed them way more so we have to be cautious and careful um k i don't know if you want to if you want to chime in on this um but there's there's just there's multiple ways to do it you know what i'm saying there's multiple ways to do it and it's healthy to to adjust it's healthy to be in the loop i'm gonna pin you up real quick k drama um i'd love to hear uh wait how do i do that hold up hold up hold up hold up where you at and then, uh, and then you guys, if you guys got questions, feel free to throw your hand up. We don't have to stay stuck on this, um, on, on one topic, but, but go ahead, K-Drama. Yes, I, I would definitely echo, um, stack, stack your paper up on the front end. It's almost like, um, I see people talk about, uh, you know, how you, if you got an apartment, for instance, and you're like, man, I could be, I could be spending this on a house. Like why mm-hmm. pay rent when I could have a mortgage? Um, and I hear that a lot. But oftentimes people don't consider like things break in the house. You know, you're the landlord. Um, things can happen. And uh, if you're if your house poor, then that house is going to be more of a I won't say a curse, but it'll it'll cause a lot of frustration. And so I think similarly, like with with a music career, like if you on the front end or, you know, you're, you're working on your craft. But at the same time, you're you're, um, you're saving up. And you're you're putting the work in. Of course, like you said, it's not sexy, but it gives you that stability to where when you want to really make moves, you can. And I wish I would have did that like on the front end. Like I wish I had mentors who told me that like straight up, because you know I'm looking up. I got people I'm looking up to, and I'm like I want to I want to do shows full time, and you know I want to not have to work this job. You know this nine to five that is giving me this cushion, but it's not my passion. And um, oftentimes we we just we move too soon, um, and then it caught like because I I've been married, man, thirteen years. So mm-hmm. I've I've had the ups and downs, you know, being signed with a label, um, and having you know having things go my way, but then yeah. at the same time the label not doing you know what I expected them to do. Even if you have it, you know, in contract, even if you have a decent contract doesn't mean don't necessarily execute on it and so um 
you know, and if you don't got the firepower or the war chest to be able to fight back, then, mm. you know, what's the point? So it's like, yeah, go ahead, try to sue me. But if you don't got the money to really withhold that lawsuit, you know what I'm saying? So I would just say, yeah, if, if you can, you know what I'm saying, put in that work on the front end, I'm telling yes. you, like, it, it, that's like you said, that time, it, before you know it, like, it's like, man, has you haven't skipped a beat, you know, but f- for someone like me, like time is a whole different, you know, situation. So, so yeah, yeah I, I echo. Yeah. Y'all, y'all are saying the right things. It's, it's amazing. And, it's and Ruslan, can I, can I say something real quick, bro? Yeah. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me, let yeah. me, who's that? Who is, who is, who's in That's here? Pastor Roy. Oh, okay. I got you. Hold on. I'm coming back right to you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so and it was so there was there. I, I love what what, uh, what K Drama was saying. And you said something on the the. And I just happened to be. I'm not even on Facebook like that, but I happened to be on and I saw you do the interview with KB and Amin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, and so there was something that you spoke on that you're the only other person I've heard talk about it other than me, which okay. is entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurship, right? Yep. Entrepreneurship. Yep. And I think what we don't encourage a lot of young people to do. Um, is to try to figure out ways where they can leverage their creativity in their gifts cool. within their profession, right? Because then you can be doing something in your profession that you're passionate about, right? And then somebody's paying you to do it, right? Like mm-hmm. I can't, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like I have a job, but in reality, I love what I do for a living because it's my job to lead people and yes. my calling is to be a pastor and I lead people all over North America. Yep. So like on a daily basis, I'm just giving people advice, but I created my own job and I've created the last three jobs that I had at my company. I've every promotion I've got. I wrote the job description for that promotion up until the vice president role. I currently have. Mm-hmm. I literally wrote the job description because entrepreneurship and the concept of identifying a problem. Right. And then figuring out a skill or a gift or something that God put in you that can address that problem can help eliminate two birds with one stone, Come on. right? You can be doing something that you're earning money from, but at the same time, you're passionate about it. And that's why like a lot of people that I mentor, you know, everybody want to jump out, but I'm like, wait, like, what are you trying to leave to go do? And Come then they'll on. tell me, I'm like, can you do that at work? Yes. Like, could you do that at work? Like, yeah. you know, my, yeah. my best friend who's a film producer wound up teaching himself graphics and he was working at American Express and wound up in the graphics department from the mortgage department, mm-hmm. right? Because I told him, like, show him what you can do. And then he wound up over training and documentation. So, he, you yeah. know, he went from working on the phone, doing mortgage, um, doing mortgage and foreclosures to making training material and, and basically sitting at American Express and Photoshop all day and got yeah. paid more money for it for doing something that he enjoys. So I think entrepreneurship is something – we need to encourage a lot more artists to do because companies want it, but it's just not something that's taught. 